Hello and good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Azlani and you're watching Updates at Noon. Making the headlines today, senior citizens can walk in for a booster at four PPVs in Klang Valley. And Britain freezes a BBC funding for two years. Prime Minister Dato Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob sent Typhoism greetings to Hindus throughout the country celebrating it today. Through a post on his Facebook page, Dato Sri Ismail Sabri expressed hopes that the festival will be celebrated in meaningful ways together with their families. He also said Typhoism is an important celebration for the Hindus in Malaysia, which is celebrated in the month of Thai, the 10th month in the Tamil calendar. Walaupun pada tahun ini sambutan diadakan secara sederhana dan kecil-kecilan bagi mengekang penularan wabak COVID-19, saya berharap keluarga Malaysia yang beragama Hindu dapat meneruskan upacara mengikut norma baru dengan mematuhi SOP yang telah ditetapkan. Semoga sambutan Taipusam pada tahun ini akan terus memupuk semangat perpaduan sesama rakyat yang berbilang kaum, agama, dan bangsa sekaligus menyemai sifat keterangkuman dan kebersamaan antara keluarga Malaysia. Selamat Hari Taipusam. The Dunkel Bridge at FT31 Jalan Banting Semenye in the Sepang District is now open for public access after it was closed on 17th December last year. Senior Works Minister Dato Sri Fadila Yusof said the reinforcement of slopes and riverbanks of Sungai Langat through Phase 2 of the project will be continued to avoid future corrosion in the long term. Kita telah minta JKR untuk laksanakan kerja dan peruntukan sebanyak 800,000 di diberikan dan ianya dilaksanakan oleh syarikat konsesi kita iaitu syarikat Rotke dan alhamdulillah semua kerja-kerja telah disiapkan targetnya untuk disiapkan hujung Januari ini alhamdulillah projek ini dapat disiapkan awal dan hari ini telah pun dibuka untuk laluan orang ramai Meanwhile, he also informed that about 80% or 943 out of 90, 994 roads affected by floods nationwide have been fully cleaned, with the remainder still under the responsibility of the works department in the respective states. He added that repair works will continue to be made a priority in the JKR post-flood efforts. Four integrated COVID-19 vaccination centres, PPV in the Klang Valley, will be open beginning tomorrow for the elderly to get their booster shots on a walk-in basis every day except for public holidays. The Health Ministry in a statement informed that the elderly are required to have a complete digital vaccination certificate on the MySajatra application to smoothen the vaccination process. The four PPVs are the World Trade Center PPV, Ajiata Arena Bukit Jalil PPV, Ideal Convention Center PPV in Shah Alam, and the Soka Gakai Hall PPV in Klang, Selangor. Meanwhile, the Health Ministry said off site PPV in Selangor, Kuala Lumpur, and Putrajaya, Negeri Sembilan, Malacca, Penang, and Sarawak will also be open for the elderly for walk in vaccination from 24th January. The full list of vaccination centres will be announced by ProTech Health Corporation in the near future. In addition, Pfizer booster shots will also be given to certain individuals such as pregnant women or individuals who have contradictions to the AstraZeneca vaccine. As of yesterday, booster vaccination coverage for senior citizens aged 16 and above in Selangor, the federal territories of Kuala Lumpur and Putrajaya, Negeri Sembilan, Malacca, Penang and Sarawak has exceeded 70%. 
The Para Forestry Department will investigate the photos and claims of logging activities going on at the Kledan Sayong Forest Reserve in Kuala Kansa, which went viral recently. Para Menteri Besar Dato Sri Sarani Muhammad said so far his office had not received a report on the matter and he did not rule out the possibility that those were old photos. Recently, numerous photos went viral showing trees being cut down in the Kledan Sayong Forest Reserve. Licenses are issued based on approval by the committee which must be possessed in order to conduct logging activities in Malaysia. If they do not have one and are bringing out logs from the forest, that is considered as stealing wood. Speaking to reporters after attending the Doan Selamat and Santai Bersama Menteri Besar Perak program, he added that if there is a legal logging, legal action can be taken but investigation must be carried out first. The fire at the waste disposal site in Pulau Burung, Nibong Tebal, will take another week to be fully extinguished as it involves a wide area. Deputy Water and Environment Minister Datuk Manso Osman said authorities are in efforts to overcome various issues such as ordering the management company to take responsibility. He said the fire extinguishing operations and by firefighters are also facing difficulties due to low water pressure. Authorities will scramble to overcome the issue quickly as the air pollution from the fumes emitted are toxic and can affect the health and livelihoods of some 400 nearby residents. The waste disposal site was reported to be on fire last Wednesday. For the record, the affected management company is a repeat offender as they have faced illegal action multiple times for conducting open burning at the site. The possibility of having a Johor state election after Chinese New Year celebrations remain undetermined. Johor Menteri Besar Datuk Hasni Muhammad stated that the Johor government cannot simply advise the Sultan of Johor, Sultan Ibrahim Sultan Iskandar, to dissolve the state assembly to hold an election. Dato Hasni explained that the dissolving of the state government is bound to the conditions of the state constitution which must be abided. However, the need for holding a Johor state election is undeniably needed and requires closer study. He added that proper justification to hold a state election is more important compared to the date of the election. Over the past week, there were growing speculations that Johor may hold a state election after the death of Parti Pribumi Bersatu Malaysia's Kempas Assemblyman Dato Osman Sapian on 21st December last year. Saya tak boleh sesuka hati mengistiharkan atau menasihat kebohan beli tuanku besok bubar lusa atau tak payah bubar dan sebagainya. Jadi... Uh, untuk itu tidak ada pihak yang perlu bimbang uh, saya akan berpegang kepada uh, apa nama peraturan yang telah ditetapkan oleh uh, undang-undang tubuh kerajaan negeri The Household Income Expenditure and Basic Amenity Survey 2022 will be conducted starting January until December 2022. The survey, managed by the Department of Statistics in Malaysia, DOSM, involves over 500,000 residents across 93,000 selected households. Minister in the Prime Minister's Department of Economy, Dato Sri Mustafa Muhammad, said the survey could help the government especially in analysing the distribution of household incomes and their expenditures in a more detailed domain. Findings from the survey will also become the new baseline for the government in forming a new policies and other related matters pertaining to the welfare of the rakyat. The survey will be done in face-to-face -face interviews or respondents could also opt a self-response survey form online. Angka-angka yang diputih ini adalah penting untuk untuk perancangan negara. Kita nak buat sekolah, ya, kena tengok jabatan berkat mana ramai orang. Kalau saya berniaga, nak buat supermarket, saya nak buat supermarket, saya kena tahu di mana ramai orang. Di Salah Tinggi ke, di Sepang ke, ya, Bukit, 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 Bukit Lancong ke. Ya. Ha, jadi itulah pentingnya perangkaan. Ya. Perangkaan ini jatuh perangkaan yang terlihat. Jadi orang berniaga guna kalau pelabur. Dia nak, nak, nak tengok di mana yang paling tempat yang paling baik. Ya.
Eight-time Super League champions Johor Daruta Zemu will be hoping for a better outing in their seventh appearance in the Asian Champions League ACL. The Southern Tigers are drawn in Group I with four-time J-League champions Kawasaki Frontale and eight-time Chinese Super League winners Guangzhou FC. The fourth team in the group is either former champions Ulsan Hyundai of South Korea or Thailand's Port FC who will face off in a playoff match. Matches will be played in centralized venues. The winner of each group and three best runners-up from each region will advance to the run of 16 of the knockout stage. JDT hopes to host their Group A at the Sultan Ibrahim Stadium in Iskandar Putri to boost their hopes of reaching the last 16. The group stage starts on 15th April and ends on 1st May. JDT have yet to reach the last 16 in the ACL. Last season, the squad coached by Benjamin Mora finished third in Group G behind Nagoya Grampus of Japan and runners-up Apohang Steelers of South Korea. The Malaysian Hockey Confederation MHC has decided that the 2022 Malaysia Hockey League Championships for the men's and women's categories will be held from 18th February to June. MHC Competition Committee Chairman Datuk Sri Dr Anil Jeet Singh said the date for the end of the competition, however, had not been decided as the committee had to wait for confirmation on the actual number of teams that will participate in the tournament. He said MHC would also consider re-establishing the Division 1 competition if the parent body received a high number of team entries. Dr. Sri Dr. Anil added that the tournament this year will also return to the league format where the matches will be conducted on a two-match or home-and-away basis and will not be conducted according to the carnival format like last year. The concept adalah home away tapi semua perlawanan akan ber berlangsung di Semenanjung Malaysia dia tak akan pergi sebelah Borneo maksudnya dia akan di Semenanjung Malaysia saja He also said the league will take a break during the month of Ramadan Meanwhile, Datuk Sri Dr. Anil said participating teams were allowed to use the services of national players and imported players, but in one match, only six such players from the two categories were allowed to be on the field. He also said teams that want to register imported players must take full responsibility to obtain permission and release for the players to come to Malaysia to participate in league competitions. Only to play inside during the league, we only allow six. Six national players? No, six and both. Lah. Uh, foreign and national. They want to call, it depends on the teams. They want to call foreign players how much they can, but, but follow the format, it's the same like last year. So. certain on whether certain information are true or false, follow these tips. Accuracy. Is the news source a credible person or research? Authority. Identify the author of the news and ensure that they are experts in the field or whatever is being written about. Currency. Check the publication date. It may be an old article that was resurfaced for publicity and traction. Coverage. If the news is too short and not specific, it is advisable that you ignore it. Objective. Evaluate the possible purposes of a publication. If it serves no benefit or instead damaging and may result in chaos, it is better to avoid sharing. Tidak pasti, jangan kongsi. tell you stories relevant new efficient accurate reliable we bring you extraordinary stories from around the world from politicians bankers and even your favorite celebrities this and many more on RTM's English news
That concludes today's edition of Updates at Noon. In our top story, senior citizens can walk in for boosters at four PPVs in Clam Valley beginning tomorrow. Tune in to News at 10 coming up at 10 p.m. on Salona Brita RTM on my previous channel 123. You can also stream the news by surfing RTM Play. Thank you, I'm Aslan Yadani. Stay tuned to TV2. Goodbye for now.